This video is short and sweet. We're talking about modeling electrons with the pencil beam dose algorithm. So how do we model the electrons with the pencil beam calculations for dose? What does the PBC need and how would you model it? So we model the electrons with the Fermi IGES multiple columbic scattering principles. So this is fast. It's easy, and especially with homogeneous material, it is easy, accurate, and like I said, fast. Now, it breaks down in heterogeneous environments at material interfaces, under oblique incidence, or where electrons hit their practical range. So there is a limitation to how accurate PBC can be. And that's why often, unless it's ideal circumstances, you don't use it in a ton of clinical work. Now, it considers a point source with electrons coming from it, and it breaks that into beamlets to determine and calculate the dose. So what does this need? So it needs the stopping power, first and foremost, like most electrons, and even when we start getting into protons and things, you need to know the stopping powers of the materials. You need to know the scattering power. And it also, it uses, how would you model this? So you're going to use a Gaussian model. And when you look at the equation, it's got an infinity sign, and that's because it assumes an infinite slab. Now, of course, this isn't as accurate, and I strongly encourage you to know a bit about all of the alg or algorithms, know which ones that you use in your clinic, why you use them, and then in general, which ones are the most accurate. So in our case here, Monte Carlo, of course, is the gold standard. That is the best that we have. We then have our collapsed cone convolution. That is more accurate than the AAA algorithm. And then that is more accurate than the pencil beam uh, convolution calculation. So it's, it's low on the ladder in terms of accuracy. However, it's good to know its limitations. And it can be used in certain situations. You just need to know what the limits are and when you should not use it within the clinic. So the pencil beam calculations have a... There's a lot of math, a lot of theory. Feel free to dive into that. But remember, part three is a clinical exam. There may be some theoretical questions to it, but you don't want to spend hours on hours researching theory and understanding equations because they want you and to ensure that you are a clinical physicist who will not hurt individuals who are being treated. So focus on the application, focus on the clinical significance, and you are going to do well.